the country is remembering a titan of baseball, the legendary Hank Aaron, the home run king. He died Friday at the age of 86. But Aaron was known for more than just hitting the ball out of the park. In 2014, our Barbara Harrison talked to him about his role as an athlete in the civil rights movement. Swinging. There's a drive into left center field. It's gone. It's 715. It was without a doubt one of the greatest moments in the history of baseball. That pitch hung on the outside part of the plate, but it hung right down the middle. It was the 1974 home opener in Atlanta. Henry Hank Aaron at the bat, facing Dodger pitching great Al Downing on the mound. And I was able to get my bat on it, you know, and that was it. <laughs> he was 40 years old then. Now, nearly 40 years later, he remembers that ball sailing almost in slow motion toward him, hovering like magic, awaiting his swing. As he rounded the bases, the crowd went wild. On that April day, 1974, Hank Aaron became the home run king, besting the coveted Babe Ruth record by hitting his famous 715th home run. That ball now stands in suspended animation on Hank Aaron Drive, where they honor the man who made a science of playing baseball, Henry Hammerin Hank Aaron. Inside the stadium in Atlanta, he talked about how he learned to predict every ball headed in his direction. I had the ability to play baseball. That was, that was given to me by God. But I had to apply my own intuition into it in order to make myself a little bit better. When he joined the major leagues in 1954, Hank was only 20 years old. And just a few years before that, he'd never held a real baseball in his hand. My parents couldn't afford to buy a bat. They couldn't afford to buy a ball. And so actually we did everything we could in order to pretend like we was playing baseball. You know, we would take rags and wrap them up tight and throw to each other, you know. Growing up in the segregated South, he says his mother worried about her children's very survival. She would tell Bo, all of us to come in the house, and I would say, for what? She said, just come in the house and get under the bed. And then about 10 minutes later, we would have the Ku Klux Klans coming through, intimidating, throwing fire bombs and things like that. At 18, he joined baseball's Negro League. From there, Hank Aaron won a spot in the minors, starting out in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where he worried about being accepted. I think I only saw one black face in the whole city of Eau Claire. But the fans welcomed him there. I had a family that always talked to me and said, whenever you want to come by and have dinner, come by our house. And I used to go by there quite often and have dinner with them. But a later stint with the Jacksonville, Florida minor league team, Hank was reintroduced to the racial disparities of the South. We didn't enjoy the luxury of playing like some of the white players did. It was a great time for me. I always tell people I led the league in everything but hotel accommodation. <laughs> When he was called to the majors in 1952, Hank was happy to return to Wisconsin. But the Braves moved to Atlanta, Georgia in 1966, bringing their home run hero, Hank Aaron, back to the South in the midst of the civil rights struggle. He says he and other well-known black ball players, though, chose not to march in the civil rights movement. Some of us, including myself, wanted to take time out to go and, and be part of the march. And we talked it over and we decided that the best thing to do is continue to do baseball because, you know, we were seeing little progress in baseball. He hoped to make progress in Atlanta, he says. And yet I thought in order for the people to realize that I was as much part of the team as anybody else was to try to win them over by hitting home runs. And he did. The fans loved him. The home runs kept adding up, and he began to chase Babe Ruth's celebrated record. But racial prejudices by some marred the magic of that time for Hank Aaron and his family. I had many, 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 many death threats, but uh, I couldn't open letters for a long time because they all had to be opened by the, the, either the FBI or somebody. You know, I, I couldn't open letters. And because of threats, his children were not able to come to the ballpark to see their dad play. I was angry because of my kids. I was angry because they were not able to share in what I think was the greatest part of my life as far as baseball. But he kept on playing. 
And if there had been any fear of being an open target on a public field, he got out there and did it anyway. Hank Aaron became the man to break one of the most cherished records in baseball, being the first to beat out Babe Ruth to become the king of swing, the home run champion. As he ran the bases that day, two fans suddenly stole onto the field and ran along with him. Fireworks were blaring in the background. And if any of this were, even for a moment, frightening to a man who could have feared the worst at any turn, Hank Aaron just kept going. Moment. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. You know, I, I finally hit the home run, got at the bases, and when I got home that night, I got on my knees and prayed. Henry Aaron made history, and we celebrate him as an American hero.